Welcome to St. Vice Museum Angel Catholic Church. Our presider today is Father Greg Nelson. Please join us in our opening hymn, Be Not Afraid. <laughs> Thank you. 
Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts the spirit of adoption as your daughters and sons, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. And we ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us now be seated as we contemplate God's holy word. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand by the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountain and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny, whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ 
for the sake of my own people, my kindred, according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There is the adoption, the glory, the covenant, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There is the patriarchs, and from them, according to flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Since you have an Irish pastor, I have an Irish story for you today. An Irish boy had heard of his daddy, his granda, and his great-granda before that, that on their 18th birthdays, they walked across the lake from their homestead to the village to get their first drink at the old pub on the other side of the lake. This was part of the legend that nothing will stand in the way of a man and his family and his drink. So the boy waited until the hot summer day of his 18th birthday, and he assumed that it was now his turn 
to continue the legend of his daddy, his granda, and his granda before that. He went out onto the dark, stepped out onto the water, and immediately sunk to the bottom. Walking back, soaking wet, he went to his grannies to tell her that he could not walk across the lake like his daddy, his granda, and his granda before that. He said, Granny, I'm going to go, Irish boy. I love my mother. I pray to Our Lady, the Holy Virgin. And I don't really like Protestants. Why am I not as holy as my ancestors? And the grandmother slapped him on the backside and said, For Christ's sake, you're not as smart as they were. The boy was even more ashamed, and now a little angry. And he asked, crying, Granny, why am I not as smart as my ancestors? Granny said, your daddy, your granda, and your granda before that were all born in January. For Christ's sake, this is August. First time story, yes or no? Okay, great. If taken literally, our gospel story today has little or no relevance for it or for us. But if we take it symbolically, it has great relevance for us, and that seems to be how Matthew wanted it to be taken. But there's one line in the story that before the dramatic uh, walking on the water took place, where did we find Jesus? going off to a quiet place to pray. For God's sake, if Jesus needed to pray, how much more do we need to? Think about that. So, even though this story is to be taken symbolically, it does represent something that really did happen. The boat represents the early Christian church. And the wind and the high waves represent the persecution that the early Christian church uh, was experiencing. Matthew tells this story to demonstrate the kind of faith that followers of Jesus must develop if they are to weather the storms and the waves and the high wind of life. We have all experienced storms and waves and high wind, even if we're not even close to Siesta Beach. We must realize that the storms and the persecution and the waves and the wind tell us in our own lives that we must be strong in our faith. And in our faith, if we begin to tremble, and if we begin to doubt, yes, we are going to sink like Peter did. Peter is symbolic also in this story, because at the Last Supper, he said that he would never betray the Lord, and the cock crowed three times when Peter had denied Jesus, not once, not twice, but three times. And now, once again, he has a chance to prove his worth. And what happens a second time, he doubts and he sinks. I love the fact that Peter is known as the stumbling saint. The stumbling saint. So, with his denial and with his lack of faith, if God can still call him, to be rock and to be the first pope, then how much more are we able to realize our lives and how we are called to live in a way that says that in the stormy times we are going to have faith. And there will also be times when fear will overtake faith as it did for Peter. So if Peter can have a commitment like Jello, if he 
he can have these knocking, if he can say, uh, I cannot walk, Lord, I do not have the faith, but fear is stronger, then how much more will we be able to experience the stormy times of life? So it is comforting, my friends, for us to see that the apostles and early Christians were weak and fearful, just like us. We may think that we have great faith, but when difficulties arise, we discover that there was very little faith. The example of Peter, again, is particularly enlightening. He represents the typical disciple caught between faith and doubt. He set out to obey Jesus, but as soon as he felt the force of the wind, that is, the persecution, his courage failed him. But Jesus upheld him in his power. Jesus would say to Peter, um, why did you doubt? Why were you of so little faith? So if Jesus can say that to Peter, he can say it to us. And we know the end of the story, unlike Peter did. And so you can only imagine the fear that overtook his faith. He really did not know how the power of Jesus Christ was going to lead each of them out of persecution and into a place of rest. Faith assures us that we are not alone in our trials. God is with us, and his power is available to us. As I said, Peter is known as the stumbling saint. He is a favorite with many, probably because the weakness we see in him, we see in ourselves. Inconsistent in our beliefs. But we must not judge ourselves or others by momentary lapses, but by commitment over a long time to our beliefs. At some time or another, every disciple of Jesus, every one of us, his faith is faced with very trying circumstances, very difficult decisions, and we are asked to walk on water. And sometimes we need the Lord to uphold us. And so this evening, my friends, I ask you to experience this reflection as one that gives us strength, that one that gives us power, that one that reminds us that even in our weakness, God is there. And so I ask, Put your hand in the hand of the man who still the waters. Put your hand in the hand of the man who calmed the seas. Take a look at yourself, and you will see others differently. Put your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Folks, let's take his hand. We may not walk on water, but I can assure you we will have life eternal. Praise God. I invite you now to stand as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, right from right, true God from true God. He got to not made. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to 
judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And now, sisters and brothers, we make our prayers as God's faithful people that true faith will flourish everywhere. For the household of God on earth, visibility united around the true successors of Peter and the apostles. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In periods of insecurity and uncertainty, we ask God to sustain the Church of Hope in Christ's redeeming love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For courageous faith in Christ when we are victims of fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Grant us your spirit of love and self-discipline so that we may come together working to control and eliminate the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gentle repose of our dearly departed, especially Richard J. Lowenski, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Regina Hopkins and Mary Allen Bright, whom we are remembering in a special way in this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the parish prayer line and our own special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us also pray for Father Michael and his family as they are enjoying these days of summer and vacation. We pray that his time away will be life-giving and that you will bless him in his travels home. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, as you receive these prayers, you may grant us a strong faith and an abiding trust in your Son, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for our presentation of the gifts. My sacrifice and yours may be pleasing and acceptable to God our Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, guys. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as a joyful celebration we now sit. <laughs> mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Frank, our local bishop, the clergy, and especially your holy people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Michael, the Archangel, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. United in faith, we now pray as Jesus taught our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, who said to your disciples, Peace I give you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord. Turn to those closest to you and extend to them a gesture of God's peace.
know that drive-up communion will be offered immediately following the 10 o'clock mass under the portico uh, tomorrow morning. Religious education registration is ongoing for the month of August. Please contact Leslie at the parish office for details. We would like to offer adoration of the Blessed Sacrament again on Tuesdays. If you have the time and are willing to commit to an hour or even a half hour, please contact the parish office. The monthly outreach for August is My Choice Pregnancy Center. The center is in need of diapers of all sizes and baby wipes. The outreach collection will be Saturday, August 15th, and Sunday, August 16th. However, you may also bring your donations to the parish office anytime during the week. Bethesda House is overwhelmed with the generosity of St. Michael's parishioners. In the last four weeks, they have received 1,000 pounds of non-perishable items from you and you and you. They wanted to make sure that you know that they are truly grateful for your continued support. We will continue the food drive in August. You can drop your donations at the side door of the parish office there are shelves to place the food for your convenience. Father Michael, uh, if all goes well, when we were returning back to uh, Sarasota on Tuesday, um, I will be with him until the following Monday um, and until he gets his uh, Sarasota legs back under him. He's had a great time uh, visiting his dad um, and I will tell you that he never knows if this is going to be the last time he sees him. So I'm so grateful that they had good weeks to, uh, to celebrate. And if you look in the bulletin this weekend, there are pictures of Father Michael's great niece named Sophie. He baptized her last Saturday. And there's a couple of really good pictures of uh, Sophie and uh, Father Michael and his uh, two nephews. Um, I guess there's nothing else, so we'll just go home, okay? Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May our loving God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My dear friends, our Mass is ended boldly, walk in peace. Thanks be to God. And our closing hymn is on Eagle's Wing. Uh, uh, uh.